This episode is about the silent hell confronting the truth about gaslighting. Ah! Hey everybody, welcome to Therapy Talk. My name is Tammy. I'm a licensed mental health therapist in the state of Iowa and Alaska. And Pauline and I, um, we try to do videos that, that destigmatize mental health, or we are here to educate you on some mental health issues. So in this series, we are taking the idol and we are dissecting it and we are uh, applying real life terms to the situations that we're seeing on the idol. In this episode, in episode three, we are seeing a lot of gaslighting. That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about gaslighting. Gaslighting is when a person tries to obtain power. How do they get their power? Well, what they try to do is they get their partner to question their reality. I guess it's a common tactic of dictators, abusers, narcissists, and cult leaders. It's done slowly and over time. It's done so slowly that usually the person does not know that they are gaslighted. The term comes from a movie back in 1944 called Gaslight. In the movie, a man manipulates her to the point where she feels like she is going crazy. Um, so... The question is, how does one become a gaslighter? Great question. So it's not something that you just have in your genes. Many people are gaslighters because they witness it. They witness being gaslighted or they, I mean, they experience being gaslighted or they witness it. I don't think gaslighters just wake up one day. I want to be a gaslighter today. Yes. No, they don't do that. Sometimes it's children growing up in situations where they're seeing their, their um, caregivers gaslight each other. Sometimes it's childhood trauma combined with a personality disorder. Gaslighting can also be called psychological bullying. That's a term I haven't heard of until I started researching this. Did you know that? So in the show, The Idol, episode three, I feel like this episode totally screams sexual gaslighting. If you've watched it, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments. But let's talk about some sexual gaslighting. It's a lot like regular gaslighting, so let's talk about regular gaslighting first. One, blatant lies. You know it's a lie, but they keep telling the lie. They lie to your face, and they deny that they're lying. Mm, this is really true of narcissists, too. They become highly absorbed to themselves. They really love themselves. They pat themselves on the back and they really look down on other people because they really do think that they are better than everybody else. Point two, they take what's important to you and that's the first thing that they go after as ammunition. And they do that to get what they want. So let's use idol for instance because that's what we're talking about today. Tedros often suggests um, Jocelyn that he is helping with her music. He does this often by making her second guess herself, her choices, her decisions, her wishes on where she wants to take the record label in her songs. Tedros is using her music, putting down her music and getting her to the point where she allows him creative control of her music. Number three, gradually they wear you down. A lie here, a lie there, a lie there, here cow everywhere, everywhere cow cow. Anyway, the thing is, even the most smartest person can be blind to this. It's kind of like the example of the frog in the boiling pot. Now the frog can be, and I think that's really mean, but you throw a, a frog in a pot and we boil it, right? Well, we slowly boil it. We slowly turn up the heat so that the frog doesn't know it's being boiled. So this is true as of gaslighting. I think of an example of this with the show, not using frogs, but the show is that he takes her shopping and what girl wouldn't, well, nobody, who would not want to be taken shopping with somebody else's money? And at first glance, we think it's a sweet gesture, but he's picking out all her clothes. And Jocelyn's friend, her assistant, sees that he's manipulating her, but Jocelyn does not see that she's being manipulated. She, the assistant even says later on to on a phone call that, hey, Jocelyn's being brainwashed. So we start seeing Jocelyn kind of slowly getting wore down in the episodes. Her opinions matter less and less and less. 
And we see this through the entire episode. For me, it was so painful to watch and so sad. So I'm afraid that Jocelyn is the frog in the pot. Jump, Jocelyn, jump, get out of the boiling water now. The next one is their actions don't match up with what they're saying. It's what they do, not what they say. In this example, Tedros constantly appears if he's doing all of this for the betterment of Jocelyn, but it's obvious he is slowly gaining control over her. This is a big no-no, and if this is happening to you, you are being gaslighted. I hope my counting is correct. I often get it wrong, but I think we're at number five. And Pauline and I like to do things in five. If you know, you know. Anyway, number five, they throw positive compliments or encouragement to confuse you. They put you down one minute and then uplift you the next. An example of this is when he talks about her music. He compliments her. He throws it in her face that she hasn't had it. Why am I playing with this? She hasn't had a hit in a very long time, like a year, I think they said at the dinner table. And it's the constant cycle of uplifting her and making her feel really good about herself, giving her a few compliments here and there, and then getting her down. I feel like Tedris is kind of like a slow burn. I wonder if he didn't give her any attention uh, or any positive compliments or positive, like, good vibes, if she would still be in the relationship. He is totally like her puppeteer. I hate it. Number six, we're on number six. They project. They might accuse you of something, but that might not be the thing they're accusing you of. I think we're on number seven. Number seven, they are big manipulators. So they use other people to help support or help um, prove their point. They will make it a point and be like, see, this other person likes this too, or this person says this about you too, or this person knows you're wrong too, something like that. They, they're all eating in this episode and they're at this big table and Tedris uses the help of the creative director to bring home a point about a photo which was covered in episode one as the album cover. Tedros uses the help from the creative director to get what he wants. It's very manipulative. He wants Jocelyn to change her image into something that she really doesn't want. Now she's outnumbered. She's around this big table and her, um, her, her creative assistant and Tedros is really talking to her about this. And she is starting to be assertive with herself. She even says to Tedros, don't be rude, which, yes, yes, Jocelyn, please do that. But he is insisting and he keeps putting, um, pushing the envelope to have his ideas become Jocelyn's ideas. Number eight, I, 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 they tell you that. The other people are the crazy ones. A gaslighter knows if you start to question your own sanity or motives, that you will second guess yourself and question yourself. And therefore, you're not going to be gaslighted, right? Um, it's all about making you feel crazy. At the same dinner party, she is not comfortable putting that photo on the cover. She says that she's not ready. She keeps saying that she's not ready. And she says, I, I'm sorry for the term, but quote, I'm not going to be called Jizz Rag Jocelyn again. Ooh. Tedra says, who cares, man? And then she says, it's humiliating and it just makes me feel bad about myself. She wants to be taken seriously and she says this to Tedros, but Tedros will not drop it. He is questioning her reason for not wanting to put that discriminating photo out there to sell her work when she's like, I don't feel good about it. This doesn't feel good. I don't want to do this. And she, she is just starting, you're starting to see her wear down. Like I said earlier, in this episode, you really start to see Jocelyn wear down with all this manipulation and gaslighting. Tedros doesn't like it when she, when she kind of stands up for herself, which I said earlier. And he then is just like, he's on her about it. Earlier, we see them in the dressing room when they're having sex in the dressing room and she asks him not to finish inside her. So we see our girl Jocelyn, she can stand up for herself. She's very strong and independent, 
woman and Chad Girls just still continues to break her down. And you can, again, you can see this in her facial expressions. It's just really sad. We are at number nine. Number nine, they try to convince you that others are telling you a lie. Then it makes them feel like they have the correct info. Uh, and now they are the person with all the answers and then you tend to listen to them and not listen to the other people. It just really, really mixed up. So Tedris does this when Jocelyn is having a family friend look at her tummy. And they say that the probiotics are working well for her and this guy's touching her stomach. Tedris doesn't like what this guy is doing. And he tries to convince Jocelyn that she does not need this guy, even though she hired this guy and has been like a family friend forever. He tries to fire him and said Jocelyn um, and kind of overstepped Jocelyn. And Tedra strongly encourages Jocelyn later to fire him. And although you can see that she is not comfortable with this, the way he looks at her and his demeanor and his power, he convinced her to fire him. Now, Tedros is making decisions for Jocelyn. Number 10, it is a form of brainwashing. We see this in the next episode when John was, Jocelyn's assistant, and we talked about this earlier, when she is calling the guy and saying, hey, Tedros is brainwashing Joss. I just wanted to, to follow up with that one again. So here is what sexual gaslighting can look like. Sexual gaslighting is about power. It's about control. It's a lot of one person controlling the other person sexually by means of manipulation. The one doing the gaslighting tries to get their victim to doubt their own sexual reality. It's very manipulative. Gaslighters are quick to dismiss emotions and feelings, concerns, wishes, and desires to their partner. And you see this time and time and time again on this episode. The sexual gaslighter will limit conversations with their partner by overpowering the conversation, basically being their voice. The puppeteer, like I talked about earlier. Then their thoughts and feelings and wishes are pushed aside. It's as if it didn't even happen. The sexual gaslighter will also place blame on their partner. So then the other has lots of feelings of guilt. It is, and guilt is such a powerful tool. Near the end of the show, he asked her to get a hairbrush. Now this scene was very, very emotional for me. It really bothered me because I do a lot of trauma work and it just reminds me of some cases. Well, he tells her to go get this brush and he tells her that he's going to use it on her as she's talking about how her mom abused her with this brush and even broke skin. And he's doing this beating in front of several people. Now, not only is she probably feeling shameful and guilty and embarrassed, but she's reliving the trauma. She's crying out. She's screaming. She is in total pain while Tedros is doing this in love to help her to try to tap into um, some inspirational motivation for her next CD that she's going to, CD, probably not CD, <laughs> that she's going to drop. But anyway, this guy is a douchebag. So do you think Jocelyn is getting gaslighted? Do you think she's getting sexually gaslighted? Please let us know in the comments below what you think. Thanks again for watching this therapist dissect the show The Idol and applying mental terms to the show. Normally I wouldn't be watching this show, but I'm watching it for you and you're welcome. Come back next week and we take a look at episode four and be on the watch out for Pauline's videos.